Today's episode is brought to you by Extra. I got a wish that's only mine. I got a wish that might seem dumb to you. I'm going to wish as hard as I can. Extra, get extra with all new Refreshers gum. It was getting late. Late in the night and late in the summer. Even though we had been gone all summer, it was only now that we felt alone and apart. I miss Joe. And I like to think that she missed me too. Operator, I'd like to make a collect call to Kathy Fitzroy. <sighs> but I wasn't there to take the call. I was waiting too, waiting for midnight. It's late, but I am a friend of Felix. Is he? Is he home? Of course he's home. It's midnight. Who is it, honey? A girl calling for Felix. Hallelujah. Felix, the phone. Hello. Hi, it's Jojo Chambers. Is everything all right? It's the middle of the night. Yeah, I, I know, I know, but I didn't really know who else to call. The thing is, is that I, I'm a little homesick and I can't go home and I really don't know where to go. Don't worry. You ever watch the sunrise? The sunrise? Meet me at the fair, 4.30 a.m. Trust me, it's magical. Okay, how will I get in? Just trust me. I'll meet you at the entrance. I know her name is Jo Her last name I don't know When I close my eyes I'll visualize This little girl named Jo How can you keep turning the other cheek? Do you not see the injustice of it all? Do I not? I'm the one out there in 100 degree heat grilling hot dogs while you sit here complaining. Oh, so you call this complaining? This is how a movement starts, with a few strong people with conviction and the courage to act. We've been here all night going back and forth. So just come right out and say it. What I say is, it's time for action. Drastic action. And what better stage is there than the world itself. So where exactly is that? Come on, man, you see it every day. Glimmering in the morning heat. You've gotta be crazy. There's security there 24-7. That's why we have you, Harold. You're our way in. And when you get in, then what? Then we show them what we're made of. Let's go, then we show them what we made of. Rise! 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 
I don't know what you have planned, but I can't be a part of this anymore. You scared me. Frank, you can call me Frank now, Kathy. I haven't been a principal for a while now. I need answers for me, but also for Joe, wherever she is right now. May I see that? Twenty years I've waited to tell this story. We're alike, you and I. Both of us were born into lives of privilege. I grew up in the biggest house on Crown Lake. My father was president of this very club. But I was a very lonely boy. That is, until the summer of 1949 when a new girl came to work as a waitress. From the moment I saw her, I fell in love. Frances Atkins. Frances, it's Joe's mom. That's right. But I didn't have the courage to talk to her until the very last day of summer, on the night of the ball, when the king and queen of Crown Lake are chosen. And that's really when the story begins. It was very frowned upon to take an employee to the dance, but Frances stole my heart that summer. My mother, though, had someone else in mind for me, Olivia Cunningham. Both our families were old money. Both families decided that we would be together. Well, I had to tell Olivia that I had feelings for someone else. She was not too happy that I chose a waitress over her. Francis and I danced through that whole night. Ah, I was in love. I had completely fallen for her. But at the end of the night, Olivia was chosen to be queen of Crown Lake, and I was chosen king. I, I couldn't find the courage to walk away from tradition, stand by Frances and show her that I loved her. Why didn't you tell her how you felt? Because I, I knew I needed something to win her back. A grand gesture, a proposal she would remember for the rest of our lives together. The tiara of Crown Lake. It was originally donated to the club by my grandmother. Well, I stole it one night and I drove down to Attaway with the plan. Instead of a ring, I would crown Francis as the true queen of Crown Lake. But I was too late. A local Attaway boy beat me to it. Joe's dad, it was him. That's right, Thomas Chambers. And they were married soon after. The ceremony was at the diner. But through all that time, my love for Frances never faded. She went to work at the rubber factory where she met your mother. And then Junior came along, and then Joe. During that time, I was engaged to another woman, but I never loved her like I loved Frances. And then Thomas went off to war. One day I saw her at the diner. Oh, she was just as beautiful as ever. And we struck up a conversation and it was like no time had passed at all. We began to spend more and more time together. My wife grew suspicious and then she found all my letters to Francis. That was the day 
that everything went up in flames. Everything is the same story. If you're lucky, Kathy, life is long. It's all one long story, but not all of them have happy endings. And sometimes you don't get second chances. You're still young, though. You still have a choice. Go home, Kathy. Forget all this. All of it was lost. All of it burned to the ground. But I still don't understand the crown of Crown Lake. If Francis never got it, then where is it now? Oh, I'm sure it'll turn up one day. Goodbye, Kathy Fitzroy. When you see Joe again, tell her I'm sorry. When did you do all this? Well, if I was gonna get up at four in the morning, I may as well get an early start. You know, I can't believe if we got past security this morning. And thank goodness for these hot dogs, because I miss dinner. Be my guest, Joe Chambers. Joe had never been on a date before. But when she relaxed, she had a wonderful time. Can I have one more? Yeah, just make sure you save room for dessert. In between bites, Jo filled Felix in on her summer adventures in the Big Apple. <laughs> Even the secret she hadn't been able to tell. So she's not your grandmother after all? Yeah, I'm afraid not. So if you're just courting me because I'm rich, well, think again. I never thought you were rich in the first place. Well, good, because trust me, if that's what you're after, I've got a lot of girls at home for you. Joe, you must be crazy. I only have eyes for you. You're sweet. Speaking of sweet, no summer in New York would be complete without some authentic Italian cheesecake. You have to take the first bite, though. I hope your mind is blown. Okay. Well? Mm-hmm. All right, New York cheesecake, better than New York hot dogs. You really know how to cheer a girl up. but I had to. If Loretta finds you here, she'll skin us both alive. <sighs> look. Come on, look. <sighs> you were right about Andre. I tried to talk him out of it, but he refused to listen. Talk him out of what? I don't know all the details, but he said it's happening this morning at the fair. No, Joe is at the fairgrounds with Felix. The fairgrounds are closed. She must have ran off with him. I heard her on the phone. Then I have to go warn them. I'm coming with you. No, you're not. Your aunt would never let me see you again. If Joe is in danger, Harold, then I'm coming. Holy cow, I'm full. What am I to end tonight? Almost. There's just one more thing left to show you. It's on the patio. I know we're technically underground, 
that's no reason not to look up at the night sky. This is really beautiful. Not as beautiful as you are. Sorry. That was corny. No, it was, it was really nice. It's just, you know, I don't, I've never, this is my first date. Me too. That's the North Star. And wherever we are, any time in the summer, it's gonna be right there, over both our heads. Joe? Abby, what are you doing here? We need to leave, it's not safe. What do you mean? Look, it's a long story, we can explain later. What's going on? Well, you need to tell us what's going on first. Guys, it's security. Ten floor, on the way. What do we do? We need to hide. Hurry, they're coming. Next time on A Girl Named Joe. This place is about to go up in flames and we're sitting ducks. Oh no.